other slides from the Fair Trade Foundation about fair trade. There's one in cocoa and one in um, um, and coffee as well. And you know, I think this this is very much about the parts of the world that you get cocoa from. Which you've got, you know, part of that's in America, West Africa, um, a little bit of Asia Pacific. And on this slide, there's a couple of verbatims. So very much farmers saying this makes a significant way, a significant difference to the way my community functions. Um, now, I, as I sort of said, I don't think there's a, a silver bullet in this situation, but I do think if you look at this, you can see that this is making a, a real fundamental difference. Um, similar slide for coffee. Um, so very much coffee. You've got central, the whole belt of Central America. Uh, Latin America, which is, you know, by far, Brazil is the biggest um, player in coffee. And then, rather than it being West Africa, coffee is more East Africa. So, Ethiopia, the birthplace of coffee, Kenya, Congo, Tanzania, places like that. And then if you go further east, you get into places like Vietnam and so on and so forth. Um, for Cafe Direct, we primarily buy from East Africa, Latin America, and Central America. We tend to work in Peru rather than Brazil, and in Africa, we worked mainly in Uganda and Tanzania, um, and Kenya to some extent, and some Congo as well. But quite a broad spread of, 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 of places that you can influence positively by buying fair trade. Um, another great slide from the Fair Trade Foundation, which is really saying it is down to consumers, and that in this marketplace, all of you have done so brilliantly on you know, appreciating the difference that can be made and choosing to use your money to make a statement about what you care about and how much difference you want to make. So I think um, you know, it's, 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 you know, we're in the middle of fair trade fortnight and I think it is down to the efforts that everybody have made to make a difference. Um, I think um, as, as a movement, I think, one of the reasons that Cafe Direct joined, which we'll, we'll touch on again, is it's part of being a collaboration to try and change things. And I think Fair Trade has done that within itself as a community, and I think also setting off other ethical kind of movements across, across this country and others. So I think um, it's important to challenge the way things are and try to find a better way. And I think Fair Trade has contributed hugely over the last 25 years to do that. So we can come back to fair trade and I'll touch on it as I go through this, this, this next section, but also we can continue to ask questions about it. Um, a little bit about Cafe Direct, and I think the best thing for me to do is to use a video to try to bring it to life. So I just got one video that we created about two years ago to try and explain a little bit about how Cafe Direct does business. Of coffee prices agreement that kept the price of coffee.
coffee at a reasonable and sustainable level, and that collapsed uh, when uh, the US pulled out of it. And so Cafe Direct was actually born by four charities intervening uh, with three cooperatives from Peru, Costa Rica, and Mexico. And essentially, it was a collaboration that became Direct Trade. So um, these charities, which were Oxfam, Tradecraft, Twin, and Equal Exchange, bought over containers of coffee, made sure that farmers were paid the right amount of money, and then sold that into fair trade shops, um, church halls, and so on and so forth. So not on the high street as effectively as it was. I mean, this is something that the world's coming back to. But, um, and, and that was very much a business born out of crisis by two different set of actors, charities and uh, farmers coming together. So actually, we, we, did, we didn't start as a fair trade organization. Um, we did then uh, embrace fair trade in 1994. So there were three brands that embraced fair trade at the beginning, which were Green and Blacks, Clipper, and Cafe Direct. And you know, um, I think it's it's remarkable and uh, profound that you know, Cafe Direct has stuck to that 100% for those, those 25 years <coughs> through difficult times and through difficult challenges and questions. I think when I'm asked about it, I think. Um, we, ch we choose to do that because of the impact it has with our farmers, but also I think being part of that and trying to hold it to account and help it to do the right job is, is, is important too. Um, we're also what's called a social enterprise. So as a business, we're proud to be part of a movement that says you need to be explicit in your articles of association about your purpose, and that purpose needs to be beyond profit. It needs to be about making a positive contribution to society and, and the planet that we're on. And we, we have that, if you look at our articles of association, it's expressed very explicitly about what these do. Um, we also um, have been on a journey where we've been very much an ethical pioneer, but we've then become very proud about the coffees and teas and cocoa that we get from our farmers, and that we have incredibly high standards of those. So we moved into speciality coffee, into roasting our own coffee, and into having a real appreciation of coffee in significant depth about five years ago. So I think not only do you get kind of watertight business models and a very ethical business model, but you also get incredibly high quality coffee as well and tea and cocoa. Um, other things that we do, so you know, we, we have fair trade as one of our impact, impact measures and, and, and ways of creating impact. We also have our own charity called Producers Direct, which I'll come back to as we get into impact. And that was set up 10 years ago. And that's a charity that's run and led by the uh, producers to then distribute funds to improve their livelihoods and the environment they work in. And what Cafe Direct does is we, we are the corner, cornerstone donor, so we don donate an amount of money to that charity, and then they use that money to raise funds for people like Comic Relief, um, other foundations across the world, and other institutions. So what that does for us, it means that our donation creates further money which creates greater impact. And also, we very much believe that if the charity is run by producers, for producers, their appreciation of the issues and delivery of solutions against those issues will be much more profound than if you're a charity that's quite a long way away from the, the environments in which you're working. Um, we're a big um, believer in organic. Um, so um, I think there'll be a slide in here somewhere that says we're about 30% organic. We, we broke through to 52% last year, so we've just got to be more than half the businesses on organic terms. Um, I mean, organic is a great proxy for looking after the landscapes uh, positively and constructively. There are things that are right and wrong with all these things, but I mean, it's, it's had a real resurgence in the UK, and it's something that our farmers, particularly in Peru, um, are great believers in. Um, as a business, we've also um, repositioned ourselves, so Two and a half years ago, we completely refreshed the business and the brand to be a much more contemporary and vibrant business, um, much more celebrating the things we do and the farmers that we stand um, shoulder to shoulder with. And that has meant the business has really flourished in the last few years. Um, we joined a movement called B Corp um, in uh, 2018 and became the first coffee company to do that. That is a, a it is not, do people know B Corp at all? I'm not expecting any hands. But no, I've got some hands over here. Um, I mean, B Corp is, is interesting because um, you know, fair trade is very much a certification for the procurement of goods um, and for your, 
supply chain. B Corp is a certification for everything you do in your business. So it looks after the, your, the way you're governed, the, the impact you have on, with employees, with suppliers, um, through your packaging, and everything else. So it's a really, it's a business certification. Um, so it's, it's quite powerful. Um, and we were determined to join that, um, did that um, a year and a half ago. Um, brand owners are part of B Corp. I mean, Ben and Jerry's, which is a you know, fair trade ice cream business, is a B Corp. Things like Pucker TR, a bank called Triodos Bank, have you heard of them? Which is our bankers and um, Barefoot is a people, yeah. Triodos Bank, so Triodos is, uh, is, a, is a bank in Bristol and in the Netherlands, it's the most ethical bank possible, I think. <laughs> Bias again. Um, so there are a number of businesses, and uh, the interesting thing about um, Beacor is you go, can go online and it's an open source certification. So you, any business can go on, start to look at it, and see where they perform. And if you don't perform well enough, you don't have to be, you know, you can then know where to improve to become a B Corp. You can choose not to do it to become a B Corp, but it helps you to think about how your business functions. And so we were determined to join that movement um, to have a more holistic view of our, our business. Um, keeping moving on, so a bit more about Cafe Direct. I mean, You'll have got it by now, but you know our purpose is very much about smallholder farmers and championing their lives. Um, we do that by creating amazing products from the, the fantastic um, coffee, tea, and cocoa that we get. And it, we are all about improving the livelihoods of smallholder farmers and also challenging the way business is done. So, I mean, the reason we we focus on smallholder farmers is because you know, seventy percent of the world's food and drink come from smallholder farmers. From you know, literally four or five people of a family working um, tirelessly on a small piece of land <coughs> to um, provide the food and drink the world dependent upon. And so, if we don't create balance and a sustainable way of working with, with smallholders, which you know, are an under <coughs> underrepresented community of many millions of people, um, it's a it's a real food security issue as well. Apart from also being wrong. So you know, we're very much about smallholder farmers. So we, you know, we, 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 as you saw on the video, we have smallholder farmers on our board. We have ownership by smallholder farmers. We reinvest our profitability, and we also pay on fair trade and organic terms to do all we can to um, help to change their livelihoods and the environments they work in. Um, I guess one of the reasons we do that, which I think has been has become so much more relevant in the last. 10 years and acutely so in the last two or three, is you know, we, we really want to see balance in the world. Uh, you, can, you can look at overall poverty levels in the world declining over the last 20 years, but the imbalance in, in poverty and um, the difference between those that have and those that don't has become profoundly um, significant. And we really want to work with others to try to improve the balance in the world, socially and environmentally. Um, it's quite a big wordy kind of vision, but it, I think really it is about trying to get balance. Um, a couple of other bits about the business. Um, we're very well governed, so we have Cafe Direct, if you go from left to right, is, is a business, which is a kind of entrepreneurial um, hot beverages company. Um, we have a separate small company called the Guardian Share Company, which is like a golden share, which ensures that the business behaves in a certain way. Uh, that the articles don't get changed, um, and it also has a, a standard called the gold standard, which makes sure that we we buy in certain ways and operate in certain ways, so that we, we don't really move away from our purpose ever. So it's kind of a lock in there. Um, then the producers have their own business called Cafe Direct Producers Limited, which is what the business that holds their shares and also has the right to nominate two directors to Cafe Direct. And then we have the charity, which is run independently are very much about producers uh, raising funds and then using those uh, to make a profound difference on the ground. Um, a couple of other bits about the business. We sell this kind of stuff. Um, so, um, although we work across um, 14 countries and 40 cooperatives, you know, our most successful products uh, very much come from Peru, and Machu Picchu is by far our most successful line. And um, if, 
you then look at it's available in freeze dried and then in, in roasted ground and then in beans. And we added decaffeinated a, about a year ago, um, and that's become our second best line straight away. So there's a lot of love for Machu Picchu, which is um, fantastic. I mean, um, often people say, why is that the case? And I think there's a, there's a combination of things coming together. I mean, clearly the iconography and the provenance of, of the location is, is you know, unbelievable, and the coffee is an incredibly uh, good coffee to drink as well. It's a really kind of chocolatey, mainstream, delicious kind of taste. So, uh, but that, 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 that's, that one part of Cafe Direct is growing at 30% a year, and represents about four out of 10 bags of, of coffee that we, we have here. <coughs> but, um, we do do other things though. We, um, we've moved into speciality, so we do some other high, higher end coffees that come from some wonderful places in the world. Um, we also do tea. So we have black tea, our Cafe Direct tea, but we also bought a 100% fair trade company called the London Tea Company um, two years ago. And uh, fruit and herbal tea, as you'll probably all know, has been growing dramatically, especially with young people. And so you know, we wanted to get some fair trade impact in that marketplace. We do also do do cocoa as well. It's a relatively small part of the business, but I'll touch on that again later. So that's a little bit about Cafe Direct as a company. Um, what else could I tell you? Quite small, only employed 30 people, um, based in London. Um, and uh, social enterprise B Corp. Yeah, we've got another question. Fred, you must have looked at who this is like, and who my country. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just getting it wrong, hang on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, th those coffees, they, they were born out of a, um, we do an online subscription business where you know, consumers pay an amount a month, mm. and then each month they get a different coffee from a different part of the world. And so that's where that came from originally, um, which is really about trying to get a direct connection and an appreciation of, of the kind of environments that you're, you're buying into. Um, I want to talk a little bit about, I'm conscious of time, but I just want to talk a little bit about impact generally and then also about the producer's direct impact. And I just want a, a small video, which I hope you know, I've turned the volume down on. We're up. I Typical, isn't it? <laughs> so we'll um, have a quick look at this video and then I'll talk about it afterwards. <laughs> Pues porque siempre hablamos de que tanto ellos como nosotros pues teníamos la posibilidad de ir desarrollando los desde que nací soy capitito y vivo de café y voy a morir por el café. Mi nombre es Eber Quispe Palomino, soy de la cooperativa Agraria Café Chalera Huasquilla, vengo de Perú, de la región Cusco. Café Lira nos ha ayudado bastante. En 2014 ninguna entidad financiera podía, no podía, o sea, no se podía acceder a un crédito, a una línea de financiamiento. Y gracias a ellos es que nosotros pudimos este, eh, obtener una línea de financiamiento a través de Ecotrade. El gesto, la nobleza de ellos nos ha permitido a resurgir del hoyo en donde estábamos. Venimos desarrollando centros de excelencia a nivel nacional, en el cual nosotros como organización, como socias también, venimos recibiendo esa transferencia de tecnología a través de talleres de capacitación, que vamos promoviendo a los jóvenes a que también se involucren en los objetivos de la organización. Estamos involucrando no solamente a los jóvenes, varones, sino también a las mujeres, puesto que este tema del cambio climático pues, nos debe involucrar a todos. Gracias al café hemos podido sostenernos hasta ahorita, hemos podido educar a nuestros hijos, hemos podido tener, generar condiciones a nuestros hijos, a nuestras familias. Y gracias al café estoy ahora frente a ustedes, conociéndolo, exponiendo, promoviendo nuestro producto. Um, is because you know, when in 
2014 they were bust really, and uh, they, they only had 300 farmers, uh, farming families in, in the cooperative. And uh, if you looked at their finances, they couldn't get money from anybody. And so um, you know, we, we chose to give them money. Um, we gave them a quite significant loan, and then we got um, our biggest shareholder to do the same and match that. And um, I think at the time, I, I didn't really think much about it, well, let's just do that, that's the right thing to do. And then when we were back with Herbert, um, in Peru, you know, two years after that, it was quite clear it had a profound impact and was something that businesses don't need to do. Um, and so I think I, I wanted to show you that because, you know, it, it is about a direct collaboration and it is about doing what's right. So although, you know, we, we buy on fair trade terms and we do some of those things that are, are recognizable, I think it's also about making tough choices sometimes. And um, when we went back and saw Herbert and his team, he made a very, um, very passionate speech, and um, we'd taken a, 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 a young guy, a national account manager from sales, and we'd taken the coffee roasters with us, and it was really humbling to hear the the real impact you'd, you'd had. And then he showed us the the export award that they'd won that year, and they'd won an award in Peru for their best exporter, and they, they showed the product the quality, and they and it clearly had, without that, they wouldn't be there. And um, so I do think, it's not just about a label, it's not just about a, a minimum price, it's about making decisions um, that, that are sometimes, you know, it didn't feel difficult, but actually it was reasonably, um, a really reasonably kind of risky thing to do. Um, uh, tragically, there's, there's been some terrible flooding in, in uh, Hoikinia in the last week, and so there's going to be more, more help required. I mean, the, you know, the, these regions are remote and uh, you know, impacted by climate change quite dramatically. More we need to do. Um, other other points about impact. I think we'll probably find that we've picked up on most of these as we've chatted. But you know, very much about our farmer-led charity, our commitment to fair trade, our commitment to organic, which was nearly 40% in 2018 and is now 52% at the end of 2019, and we'll probably get to about 60% at the end of this year. And the social enterprise, as we said. Um, quick look at the price of coffee. I mean, very much. Now, you know, the base price I talked about before was about 88 cents, it's now just over a dollar, but you've got fair trade minimum, fair trade premium, organic premium, and then the con contribution. You're really starting to make a significant difference. Um, these are just numbers to show what we've done over time. I think um, as a commercial business, you know, we've got an incredible <coughs> brand and an incredible, incredible business model, but I think if you look at the impact and the commitment that we've consistently made, it's, um, Quite profound and extreme. Um, I'm not sure we can get all businesses to get to this quick enough, but um, you know, I think um, you know, business should be here for more than just making money for a few, and uh, you know, we'll do all we can to help to change that. Um, I think we've covered most of these points. It's very much about organic and premium and. I keep telling people I need to get this, change, this side changed from 38 to 52%. Um, and then on B Core, I think we've, we've touched on that too, so hopefully we've got a clear understanding of that. I think, um, I think it's interesting. We, we, when they first came to the UK in 2015, we didn't join. And I think some people felt, oh, we've, we're really good, we don't need to do that. And I think the, the thing is being part of a community of businesses I think it's quite a powerful collaboration. And so it's been a really good thing to join that community. But also, although we do lots of things well, there are some things we don't do well. And going through a certification over your whole company makes you see what's not working <coughs> and then makes you address it more urgently. So it's a, it's a good thing. Um, a bit about impact on the ground. This is more about producers direct. Um, I've touched on it already, but 70% of the world's food is from the smallholder farmers. From over 300 million smallholder farmers. Um, and often if you don't intervene with real depth understanding, you don't change those communities, which is why I think the producer direct model is really important. Um, who would like to hazard the average age of a, a coffee farmer? 65. Oh, that's not that good. Put in the photo. Oh, I should make use of the photo. <laughs> uh, 65. Age of people who are working at altitude on the mountainside 
or probably 18, 20 hours a day for most of the week um, to get uh, you know, a living that needs to improve is 65. Um, so one of the fundamental things that working closely with the youth community needs to help change is, is the role of, of young people <coughs> on farms. Um, a lot of these, these countries, uh, young people are, are moving into the cities and, and leaving their, their families and their community behind. How many are women? You know? Well, I don't know off the top of my head, but it's 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 not not enough. Um, it's interesting. The two of the big kind of focuses for us, well, two of them are youth and women, because not only is it about the role of women, but also um, kind of quite you know significant senior influence on the community. So there's there's a cooperative in um, Peru uh, called uh, Pangoa, which is up over the Andes. And that's run by an incredible woman called Esperanza, but it's an ex it's an exception. Um, but really, I mean, you know, we need to really get diversity to function um, in Africa in particular. And you're working in very um, different communities to to Reading and stuff. Um, you know, often um, women can't get the, the you know, can't get access to the money in the in their farm, um, and so on and so forth. So there's some real fundamentals that need to change. So when we've done some stuff with Mark, it seems like it's becoming more and more women because of all the things you just said, and men are going to the city, yeah. and they always come back at the point of transaction. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Don't worry, baby, I know how to deal well, with it. Well, I don't want to be too, um, I mean, it's quite clear that, you know, I think you'd be better, if, you, if, you, if you've got some money coming in from your, your produce, um, letting the woman look after the money is probably a very good idea. Yeah, 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 <laughs> no, and that's the thing, yeah. Um, and so, no, the, the, those, are, those are two of the big issues, are certainly the role of women and the role of young people. Um, I was having a chat earlier on, um, I've had a, a number of meetings already today, and um, in one of those, there was an interesting, interesting discussion, because we come at it from the point of view of how do you help young people see value on staying on farm? And then there was some, uh, there was a conversation earlier on that in some communities, the young people feel that they need to move on because their parents are still running the place and owning it. So there's. It's a real, you know, kind of two, two different issues to face there. Um, certainly, one of the things that we've done a lot about, um, let me keep moving on, so I, you know, I'm going to move past that and get on to, ooh, I didn't want a video yet, but I, um, one of the things that we focus on is diversification. So, you know, if you're very dependent upon one crop, you're quite vulnerable, um, and also you're very much, it's very much kind of monocrop kind of farm. So one of the things we've done is, and work with farmers to diversify. And not only does that um, provide different income flows and different skills, but it also makes it a more attractive um, enterprise to young people. Yeah. So what you really need to do is help to add value, add diversity, and um, provide um, a positive kind of entrepreneurial future for young people rather than it being um, something that their parents do. Um, th this next little video is um, about cocoa, and it's really about market access um, for an island off the west coast of Africa. So let's use this to bring to life kind of impact again. Louder? Too bad. Western Africa is known as Chocolate Island. It is steeped in cocoa farming history and has an unparalleled reputation for growing some of the most prized cocoa beans on earth. Nous précisons du vin, vraiment en cocoa pour ça, on fait tous les traitements. On fait un traitement sur le terrain, on fait un traitement aussi, même s'il si n'est pas un traitement avec cacao, même un traitement avec personne, pour parler avec personne. Pour faire la sensibilisation, c'est pas exactement. C'est pour ça que quand notre cacao arrive en Europe, il arrive avec un grand, grand, grand qualité parce que le traitement, il est beaucoup, beaucoup de traitement. Au terrain, au, au la taille de fermentation, au fichoir, au sac, au bateau, beaucoup de traitement. 
The secret to Sao Tomei's quality cocoa is the island's location right on the equator. Its rich soils and perfect balance of temperature and humidity, along with the forest shade, makes it one of the few places in the world that grows the Criollo <coughs> cocoa bean. The Criollo is the rarest and most expensive cocoa on the market, representing just 5% of beans grown. Criollos are particularly difficult to grow, as they are vulnerable to a variety of environmental threats and produce low yields of cocoa per tree. It is the Criollo that gives the San Tume instant hot chocolate its delicious velvety taste and intense aroma. Lá em Abizé nós tínhamos um sistema de fermentação de seis dias e nós aplicamos esse sistema aqui. Nós vimos que não deu, nós mudamos para sete dias, agora não temos. Estamos fazendo também de manhã. Café Direct works closely with just 755 farmers across 11 villages in São Tomé. The work has been centered on training them to process raw cocoa and improve the quality, resulting in a five-fold increase in income for their crop. Esse treco, esse treco, tá? É, por lá, é, eu peguei que já vi que eu sei, mas eu que pá, já vi que eu sei. Hum. Hum. Interestingly, from a diversification point of view, quite a few coffee farmers are moving into cocoa, especially at, at lower altitudes as, as the climate's changing as well. Um, so I think I've touched on, on the importance of diversification, but um, a lot of farms now will have you know, uh, vegetable gardens, fish farms, beekeeping, other sources of income, and also other sources of um, sustainability for them as people on, on the ground too. These are some of the targets for our charity for 2020, so very much about moving the role of women up to the, the percent and focusing on youth. Um, and, and, and about increasing income as well. Um, I think this is, this is key. So when I talked about producers direct being a, a farmer-run charity for farmers, it also has a model that very much is about finding a, a center for excellence, a farm that does something brilliantly, <coughs> and then bringing other farmers to see that and learn from that kind of in, in the real world, face to face. Um, and that can be about market access, about access to finance, finance, training, including you know, looking after crops, but also diversification, and also how to manage data on farms. So the whole wealth of stuff that's, that's done on the ground. Um, and these are the, the kind of supporters. So Cafe Direct has its, its cornerstone found for donation, and then these are the kind of companies that come in and, and donate alongside us. Um, so, you know, for every, every pound that we're donating, we're getting sort of seven, eight, nine pounds as well. So, you know, you're really making sure that as a relatively small business, we're having a much more profound impact. That, that's pretty much a whole bunch of slides and a couple of videos and kind of high volume and stuff. Um, and some great questions, but we, we have got time for more questions, if you like. Yeah. We've got one over here already. Um, do you think at the risk of kind of certification fatigue and confusion in the planet to kind of come down to that. Yeah. So you've got all a bunch of schemes already. Yeah. Um, how do you come that? Yeah, and I think there, I think there is. I mean, I think for consumers, I mean, we're all consumers in the room. It's incredibly confusing, isn't it? I mean, I, you know, you've got, a, you've got the, the well-recognized fair trademark, you've got the symbol, you've got the lovely little green frog, then you've got 
um, companies saying, trust me, I'll certify myself. Um, I think so, yeah, and I think it's a real problem. Um, I mean, I've said in the past, 